Imagine you were floating through the sky on all but a single grass block for 100 days. I'll need to get enough resources from this regenerating block to build an empire and get geared up enough to slay the ender dragon. Can I do it? Keep watching to find out. Also, these videos take me a really long time to make, so hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, it really helps me out. And here I was, on my lonely grass block floating through the sky. Now, unlike some of you guys, I've actually never played one block before. Well, that's a lie, I did play it in the end, but I've never played normal one block before. So I didn't really know what to do, but I figured I should start off as every one block player does, breaking some blocks. At first I got some dirt, oak wood, and a chest holding some apples inside. After breaking a few blocks, I crafted some slabs to expand my area by just a tad. The whole standing on one block thing was giving me a little anxiety. I grabbed some more wood before being visited by this fella. A cute little pig popped up on the island. So I decided to expand the island a bit more and then got back to work on breaking blocks. Once I had some more wood, you guys already know I expanded the platform even more. I do not want to be claustrophobic with this pig. I got some more apples and spent a lot more time just breaking tons of blocks, slowly but surely progressing through the one block universe. After a short while I was already advancing to the next phase. I got a lot of dirt from this one which was actually really exciting. This way I can grow crops like trees, wheat, and other things. I got some melons and even more dirt and then another pig joined me. Now, as much as I love Minecraft pigs, these guys were sort of getting in my space. So, another expansion to the platform was needed. Using all the oak wood I had gotten so far, I expanded the platform and created a large circle. But I couldn't be bothered to fill the entire thing in, so it's kind of unfinished for now. I went back to mining and got some seeds and some more animal friends and then realized that I should probably be crafting some tools. This way, breaking blocks will be much quicker. I made a wooden axe and a shovel and to be honest with you, I don't think I've ever been this excited about wooden tools. Honestly, I don't even really craft wooden tools, except for the necessary pickaxe. The next thing I noticed was that it was getting dark, but I didn't have a bed so I just sort of stayed up all night breaking blocks while the animals stared at me. Yeah, this was really creepy. I even did some work on expanding our platform and got to the next phase which gave me stone. And after some more time mining, I was granted with some iron ores, which I then smelted and used to craft some shears so that I could craft a bed. And I was finally able to sleep. The next day was an absolute party, I mean guys look at all the friends I have on the island with me. At this point there were tons of mobs, but that didn't stop me from mining away at the one block. Since I had upgraded the phase, I was actually getting new blocks like stone and oh my god, that's a zombie. Two zombies actually. I was pretty startled from this, but hey, I got a carrot, so who cares. I slapped the chest down to hold some of my stuff and went straight back to mining. And guys, I got a spruce sapling. Boy, was I excited to get this. If you guys watch the channel at all, you know my love for spruce wood runs deep. Actually, I think it's more of an obsession than a love. But I planted this little guy down, and in no time, I had myself a spruce tree. After farming some more wood, I decided to craft some slabs and replace all of the oak wood with spruce. Because, I mean, come on, who doesn't prefer spruce wood? It's just beautiful. Now, because the platform is so large, this actually took a little bit of time. But I have to say, it was well worth it. And after this, I got straight back to mining and was visited by some spiders. Which I killed pretty easily and moved on and- Oh crap, that's a creeper! Yeah, that one really scared me, not gonna lie. But the next while was just spent breaking blocks and furthering my progress on the one block. But after some time, I realized I was really needing a farm. So I started building a bridge to a secondary island where I could plant a bunch of crops.
Now, yes, I do realize I made this farm quite small, and that's okay for now. I just need something to get myself started. And when I have more seeds, I'll make a larger farm. I set up a small platform and planted wheat, a carrot, a melon, and a pumpkin. And the next morning it was back to- Oh my god, another creeper showed up today. <laughs> yeah, I really don't like these guys. But nonetheless, I continued mining, and mining, and mining. And then I crafted some iron tools. And I got started on yet another little building project. I began building a bridge off of the main island and then got to work on building a large circle where I could build a house. I've seen a lot of YouTubers make these videos and keep everything perfectly symmetrical and circular, so I think that's what I'm going to go for. I mean, it's pretty satisfying, isn't it? Once the circle was built, I filled it with dirt on the inside, and then I needed to get some more materials for my house. So I went back to mining, and another creeper, holy guacamole, these guys keep scaring me. What? Where did they come from? The next morning, I was back to mining, and this guy popped up, killing all of my rabbits and chickens. Just ruining my morning. And then a polar bear spawned. Okay, now at first I was a little freaked out, but he was actually really friendly and even helped me take out those snow foxes. I did a little farming today and then found myself in a pickle with these guys, so it was really time to get some armor going. I spent some time today getting a full set of iron armor. And then I realized I didn't have enough wood to build my house. So I built myself a nice platform to plant a bunch of trees on top of. This is going to ensure that I have enough spruce wood to last a lifetime. And after planting a ton of trees on here, I waited for them to grow while I mined some more blocks and in no time, I had a full-fledged forest on my one block island. cut all the trees and got a ton of wood and now I was feeling ready to get started on my house. Over the next few days I was very occupied doing this and making the coolest one block house I could. I had more than enough materials now so I was able to make a good sized house, which is exactly what I did. This has got to be one of my most favorite houses I've ever built. But I forgot I didn't have glass, so I had to add fences in as my windows. I think it still looks pretty cool though. Now, I hate to break it to you, but some of my footage got corrupted here. But I'm gonna run you guys through what I did over these days. I moved all of my chests into the house and actually semi-organized things. Now, yes, my organization skills are by no means perfect, but it's still pretty decent. Then I spent some time decorating and I gotta say I absolutely love this house. I grabbed all of my crops, crafted some bread, and got back to mining. I wasn't making enough progress through the phases at this point, so I mined all the way until I got to the beach phase. Finally, I got some sand. I also got sponges, coral, and yes, finally a diamond. Yeah, I was very excited for this thing. And then I used this ink sack I got from a squid to dye my bed black. I realized just how small of progress I had made through the phases, so I spent the next few days mining. I got some great things, including sugar cane. Finally, I planted it down and almost died from being poisoned by these witches. And then I got some bird friends. Leave some name suggestions down below in the comments. And yes, as I was mining, I was visited by a whole ton of mobs. Friendly ones and not so friendly ones. 
But after a few more days of mining, I had gotten tons of things. And uh, guys, can we appreciate this llama that showed up today? Yeah, I really like this guy. So I decided I should build him his own private llama island. And as usual, I asked for some name suggestions on Twitter, and I really liked this one by Jord. So, this guy's name is Walter, and by the way, Walter loves his new home. Now, at this point, I was really wanting to go to the Nether, and get some enchants going. Which means I need one thing, obsidian. So, I crafted a diamond pickaxe and mined the gen block until I got some. And hey, I got a villager friend as well today. And then this happened. Oh, holy crap, what the... A ton of mobs spawned in and yeah, this wasn't looking super good for me. And plus, my axe was pretty much broken. I didn't know how I would defend myself. I quickly ran to my house to see if I had enough diamonds to craft an axe and thankfully I did. I went back outside and tried to kill them, but it was near impossible. I ran to the tree farm to block myself up and hit them off the edge one by one. Once I was safe, I repaired my island and got back to mining. And yes, another villager! And what? Why, why would I want a pufferfish spawn egg? Absolutely not. I also got a potato, so I'm going to plant this later on. I mined for so long until I got all the obsidian needed to go to the nether. But I was visited by a ton of mobs along the way. Yeah, I had some pretty close calls here. The worst of it were these ghasts. I mean, yeah, things got pretty bad here. I had to keep fixing up my island, so I decided to build myself a little protective shield from the ghasts. If I remember correctly, ghast fireballs can't break through cobblestone, so we should be good. And I did eventually get the necessary obsidian and built myself a portal and an enchantment table. I wanted a few enchants before heading into the nether, so I built a small area to keep the enchanting table on this cute little island and of course surrounded it by bookshelves. I'm probably going to further decorate this thing later, but for now I just wanted something that I could use. And enchanting actually went really well. Look at this bow I got. I even made myself a diamond chest plate and got prot 2 and 3 on mostly everything. Now I am ready for the nether. At first, I started grabbing the quartz that was around my portal for XP, and honestly, maybe I'll do some building with it. But I did this for a while to get myself a load of XP, and then I moved on to getting some other materials that I wanted. And that's when I came across a bastion. Yes, as usual, I was scared, but I knew that I wanted to go inside. I had a chance of getting netherite, so I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity. Using my bow, I got rid of most of the piglins I could see, and then headed straight inside to grab these chests. Now the loot here was actually pretty garbo. No diamonds or anything. So I headed deeper into the bastion and fought through a lot of piglin brutes. Thank gosh I had this power 3 bow. As I made my way down the bastion, I did grab a bit of loot from these chests and these golden blocks. But nothing too great. So I continued on and in no time found myself right outside of another fortress. This was one of the biggest fortresses I've ever seen in Minecraft. I went straight inside and found some chests with loot and even got three diamonds. This is better than the Bastion. I was in this fortress for so long getting lost around every corner. But eventually, I did make it out and decided to head back to my portal, which really wasn't too far away, thankfully. 
After making it home, I threw everything I got inside these chests. And realized that my organization skills in Minecraft were absolutely terrible, so I needed a way to stay organized, and that's what I spent my time doing over these next few days. I crafted a bunch of chests, and alas, the organizing had begun. I knew I needed to be a little less messy, because on one block, getting specific resources can be a challenge. So I wanted to keep each item I got. I even got a little fancy and used these item frames to show me which items are in each chest. After getting myself in check, I grabbed some dirt and started building this platform off of my island. I wanted there to be some more crops around here because the place was looking a little bare. So I made this big platform full of wheat and then built one on the other side of the house as well. and I also built this little tree today. I know it's not the best, but it'll do. Then I got right back to mining my one block generator. And some bees popped up. If you guys know me, I love my bees. So I had to keep them around. I attached a lead to them and made sure they couldn't fly away while I got to work on their house. And honestly, I think this fit in perfectly with the one block island. I also had a decent amount of XP and some netherite, so I decided to upgrade my pickaxe and axe by quite a bit. This is going to make mining blocks quicker and increase the damage my axe does to enemies. Now, after making this huge upgrade, I harvested my crops to get some more food. I was really surprised with how much bread I was able to get from this. And then it was time to go back to mining the one block generator. I really want to get more villagers because I forgot about mine and they sort of despawned. Yeah, not so good. For whatever reason though, I got a lot of donkeys and horses today. And then phantoms. Yeah, I hate phantoms. Also, did you know this sort of horse existed in the game because I did not? Hold up, did those bees just explode on me? Alright then. And bam, another phase done. Ah, a Vindicator showed up today, one of my least favorite mobs, but hey, I did get a totem of undying, so I guess it's all not that bad. And after a bit more time mining, I was being visited by more and more mobs trying to kill me. I wasn't too intimidated though because I had good armor, a good weapon, and a totem. So I'm pretty sure I'm good. Ah, that is until this Vindicator spawned in. I got down to just a few hearts, pretty much from the Vexes. I was unable to hold my ground. One of the Vexes actually killed me but thankfully I had a totem in my offhand that saved my life. I threw my other one on and finished them off. Phew, that was a really close one. And eventually I had made it to the end phase. I knew I'd be fighting the ender dragon any second now, but I was needing a break from mining. So I grabbed a ton of wood and built another platform off of the main island. I had a ton of random animals everywhere, so I moved them all on so that they can live happily. I know it's just a dirt platform and maybe I'll build them a barn or something, but for now I've got a dragon to kill. I spent the next day making a ton of massive upgrades to my armor. I crafted two new diamond pieces and got incredible enchants on everything. Then it was back to mining, and let me tell you, I do not like endermites. Dang, these guys are annoying.
but eventually the portal spawned in. I crafted Eyes of Ender, a shulker box, and got everything I need to kill the Ender Dragon. And off I went. Alright, this should be a piece of cake, let's go. I'm not trying to flex on you guys or anything, but I was pretty dang good with my bow here. And then I grabbed the last two towers before having to fight the beast head on. Yeah, this really wasn't difficult. I was the king of the end in no time. I grabbed the precious dragon egg and hopped back through the portal. I decided to put the egg on top of the one block gen for now, and I think it's a pretty good place for it. I probably should encase it in some glass or something though. And that my friends is how I survived 100 days on one block Minecraft. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to comment down below one block. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.